Thank you very much, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Um, I rise to speak to the Excise Tariff Amendment Cost of Living Support Bill 2002, and of course, it forms part of the federal government's um, budget delivered yesterday by Mr. Frydenberg. The, the budget does something really very important for all Australians. It acknowledges the challenges that households are facing right now as um, our market adapts to many of the challenges that have put inflationary pressures on prices. Um, the concerns emerging from Europe and the Ukraine, the impact on fuel prices um, and the impact on um, the cost of transport and its impact on groceries and the impact on household bills is something that we acknowledge in this budget, something that we empathise with and something that we understand. And so there is action to reduce the cost of living now, whether one looks to the cost of fuel, which by halving the fuel excise for the next six months, it means a household with two cars who fill up once a week will find themselves around $700 better off during that period. Whether it's about the cost of living tax offset of $420 that means more than 10 million low and middle income earners in this country will find themselves better able to cope with those increased costs of living. We'll have pensioners, carers, veterans, job seekers and eligible self-funded retirees and concession card holders better equipped to handle the price fluctuations we have seen due to that international change. We're also taking important steps to make sure that more Australians can afford the cost of a home. We know and we understand just how important that ambition of Australians to be able to save for and get into a home of their very own, including Mr Acting Deputy President, ensuring that's not something that's out of reach for people um, who are single parents. We're more than doubling that home guarantee scheme to 50,000 places per year, knowing that the enthusiasm for this program in its early years has been through the roof. Helping more Australians get into their own home, get out of the cycle of renting and own their own little piece of Australia is a big part of how we are showing that we understand the pressures that are on people for managing those cost of living pressures every day. But we're not just dealing with the here and now. We also have in this budget a long-term plan that is about building the kind of strength in this economy that delivers job and wage growth for the long term. And that is something every Australian benefits from. With $2.8 billion invested to increase the take-up and completion rates of apprentices, we will see more skilled people in the workforce. There will be 800,000 people supported into training places as a part of this budget. And with support for small businesses, to be able to get uh, supersized tax deduction for the money they are prepared to spend investing in the skill set and the training of their employees by giving them a supersized tax deduction for every dollar they're prepared to spend investing in the, the software, in the technical and electronic infrastructure needed to improve productivity, to improve cybersecurity and to improve inf efficiency of their business. Um, they can get benefits of up to $100,000 a year per business um, if they are prepared to double down on their investment in the jobs of their team, in the growth and in the contribution um, that they make to our economy. We're investing hard into local manufacturing. Of course, we've made enormous progress in developing the kind of um, specialised and high-skill manufacturing in Australia that remains an area in which we can be very competitive 
um, despite the comparatively high labour costs that we have in Australia. And it is going from strength to strength. And with support for greater commercialisation of the kind of research that is being done in enormous quantities, particularly in partnership between our universities, the CSIRO and industry, um, we are driving the commercialisation and the manufacture of new technologies, whether those are in the energy, the medical supplies, the defence um, or in other high priority areas for this country. Importantly, agriculture and energy are core to this manufacturing strategy and it's all about making sure there is a steady stream of high value intellectual property developed here in Australia so that income from new patents developed here can be taxed at almost half the rate that ordinarily applies and that means we will become a really attractive destination for people to set up shop, do their research and development and forge into a manufacturing enterprise in this country. Our regions are a big part of the story of the coalition government's vision for the future growth of our economy. And investment in our regions is how we ensure that we get great opportunities to people who live outside our cities, who we know ordinarily um, have fewer opportunities from which to choose. It is how we harness the um, enormous gift that we have in the size and in the, in the richness of um, the, the mineral and in the land wealth of this country. And it is how we ensure um, that people, no matter where they live in this great country, can not only have the same aspiration to a great job, the same aspiration to afford a home that they can be proud of, uh, but also that they can have the expectation of high quality services um, by building the wealth of this nation, by harnessing both the human talents and the natural talents of our regions, um, we can make sure that there is opportunity for all in this country um, from the strength of our economy. And all of this makes possible something um, that is really important, and that's our safety net. We're able to guarantee the essential services that Australians rely on because of the strength of our vision for our nation's economy for the long term. Um, of course, we have guaranteed Medicare. We have funded our health system at increasing levels every year under our government so that now health spending is at a record high. Last year's budget, there was a landmark $2.3 billion investment in the mental health of Australians and in suicide prevention. And in this budget, we have built on that commitment further. We've heard today in the women's um, budget statement just how much um, the prosperity and the safety and the health and the well-being and the leadership of Australian women is vital to this economic story. And that is something about which the women of this country, who now uh, face the lowest gender pay gap almost ever and um, the highest workforce participation they have seen um, ever, they are benefiting from now. And the families of this country will continue to benefit with more support for childcare and more flexibility in pa paid parental leave than we have seen um, in the past. I could keep going, Mr Acting Deputy President, but I think um, the point is clear. We are able to guarantee the essential services that Australians depend on because we have a strong plan for our economy to deliver opportunity for all. And what that means is fewer Australians who need our support in welfare and those very same people are not just getting the dignity of a job, they're not just getting the pride and the skills and um, the camaraderie that comes from having work to go to every day, but they also become contributors to this country in the sense of making um, contributions to the tax system. They are net givers rather than takers, um, and that is what we need um, to make sure that we can guarantee the essential services on which Australians rely for the very, very long term. Finally, this budget 
makes it possible for us to make a record investment in the security of this country. As we face a less certain world, as we observe uh, geopolitical tensions in Europe and elsewhere, it is more important than ever that we invest in the good men and women of our defence forces, that we grow our capability to protect our shores and that we prepare our cyber security both in the governmental and the defence sense but also to assist industries to cope um, with changing dynamics on that front. Our cyber security investment in this budget um, puts us on a robust footing on this new frontier for international conflict. And so it's in that context that um, I look with great optimism to what is ahead for Australia. And this bill plays such an important part in realising um, that vision delivered so well by Treasurer Frydenberg yesterday. And um, we look forward not just to sharing this with the Australian people in the days and weeks ahead, but delivering it, but delivering it today, tomorrow, next week, next month, and for the years and decades ahead. Thank you, Minister.